Hi friends, it's Joan at Ten Pentacles Tarot, back with another video. And today um, I am going to do a review of the Heavenly Bodies Astrology Deck and Little Guidebook by Lily Ashwell. And I really love this deck. I have to uh, preface this by saying that I'm a person who does not know, well, who did not know much about astrology when I bought this deck. In fact, I knew next to nothing about astrology when I got this deck. And now I actually know a little bit thanks to Lily. So if you're a person who is looking for an astrology deck and you they all look too complicated or intimidating, I recommend this one because this one has really helped me out a lot and I've learned a great deal about astrology. All right, so let's take a look at the package. This is outer, this is an outer sleeve. There's the end, there's the other end. Um, it says Heavenly Bodies Astrology, so you can put this on your bookshelf and it'll look very nice. This part comes off and we have a magnetic box here. There's a white feather on the front um, and a beautiful piece of artwork on the back and on each end. So, let me take my sweater off. It's kind of warm in here. All right, so we open the box and we see heaven is under our feet as well as over our heads. That's by Henry David Thoreau. And so first thing I'm going to do is take out the guidebook. And this is a hardback guidebook, which is really nice. Usually they're not hardback. And it has a ribbon um, bookmarker in it, so that's really nice. It says here, people travel to wonder at the height of mountains, at the huge waves of the seas, at the long courses of the rivers, at the vast compass of the ocean, at the circular motion of the stars, and yet they pass by themselves without wondering. And that is by St. Augustine in the year 400. All right, so here we go. This was published in 2021, so it's relatively new. And the writing and illustrations are all done by Lily Ashwell. Now, the way this is laid out is really interesting. Okay, so um, we have a section about astrology, a section about working with the deck. And then she's divided the energetics of the deck into one, two, three, four, five, six sections. And the first section is the planets. The second section of energetics is the signs of the zodiac. The third section is the houses. The fourth um, section is the major aspects. The fifth section is the natural zodiac. And the sixth section is the nodes of destiny. Now, if those sound like, oh gosh, too complicated, um, just bear with me. It's really not as bad as you think or as as uh, you know, complicated as you think. I mean, don't get me wrong. Astrology is a super complicated subject. I'm just happy to learn what I learned so far. All right, and then, so here we go. A note from Lily. This is how she got started in it. Um, here is her studio where she created the deck. She talks about understanding astrology, and she said that she actually did have a problem understanding astrology. She was like me, and... And so she, she did have a good teacher, though, and she learned all of it now. I'm just beginning. Okay, so she talks about the planets and um, the signs of the zodiac, the houses, the major aspects, the natural zodiac, which involves um, the elements, the polarity, and the, no, the modes, sorry, the modes and then we have the nodes of destiny. Okay, and here's a section on working with the deck. So she's saying that um, there are three ways to work with the deck to learn, to decode, and to communicate. And so in order to learn, she recommends this and how to learn using the deck, how to decode, and um, a map of the heavens as I took my first breath. So this is her birth chart. And if you write, if you go to her website, www.lilyashwell.com, and I'll put that in the description box, she will send you a free um, birth chart for of your own self, of your own birth chart as 
you took your first breath. And all you need to provide for her is um, your name, your birth date and year, the time you were born, and um, the, the place you were born, like the city and state if you're in the United States. All right. And um, so that's all she needs. And then she will give you all the birth chart. And I'll show you mine here in a minute. And then it talks about the deck. And this is how you use the deck to communicate, um, what to ask the deck, how to shuffle, single card spread, a card a day, the soul go growth spread with three cards, the third eye spread with four cards, and then she goes into the energetics of the deck. All right. For each card, there's a picture of the card in color, which is very nice. And um, it gives you uh, a short description, then some key words, energetics and experiences, and then it gives you an omen, which would be like your reading for this card. Okay, so it goes on with the moon, all the planets, Mercury, and so on. And Earth is used as one of the elements. It's not used as one of the planets because if you are, um, obviously, if you're on the Earth, it's just not going to be the same. Your planet Earth is not going to be out there where you can see it because you're on it. Okay, and then we have the zodiac signs. Um, we have the houses. And each house um, represents a different area of your life. So you've heard that song, The Age of Aquarius. When the moon is in the seventh house. That's what it means. And no, I'm not going to torture you with singing the rest of that song. I did a reading. I did a reading on for YouTube for the um, Zodiac Sign of Aquarius. And I sang that song and I didn't get any likes. <laughs> I didn't even get any likes for the reading. That makes me so sad. But it's brand new, so I may yet. And here are the ele the um, elements. Earth, air, fire, and water. And then we have yin, yang, cardinal, fixed, mutable. And the north node and the south node. And what's really interesting is, let me just give you a quick one. The north node is um, things in your life that you are destined to have during this lifetime. And the south node represents things that you are destined to release during this lifetime. So that's pretty interesting to me. And then we have a section for little notes. And um, and that's the end of the book. And so um, she has a short biography of herself here. And um, that's it. So that's the guidebook. And I really, really like it a lot. It's hard. This whole package is very well done. Um, I'm a fan of nice packaging. So here is um, the insert so that the card box sits in there snugly, which I love, love, love. And then let me put this over here. Let's look at the cards. All right. And um, so to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower, to hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. And that is by William Blake, 1863. See that, wait, 18... Yeah, I think it's a, it's either a six or a oh, zero, and I'm not sure which. All right. So she has these neat little quotes everywhere in the deck. Okay, so this is what the back of the card looks like. Um, they're probably a, a matte finish, I would say. Yeah, matte finish, definitely. And um, these aren't any cards that you would want to reverse for any reason, I don't believe. Let me see. I don't think they're reverse meanings anywhere. No. Well, there is a light side and a shadow side, so perhaps, but the back doesn't really lend itself to being reversed because you'll, it's obvious, like, hello, I'm reversed. You'll be able to know. All right. And then um, let's just look at the cards because the artwork is lovely. It's uh, watercolors done by Lily Ashwell, of course. Okay. And then it has, each card has um, uh, the name of the card. And then it'll give you some keywords here on the bottom of the card as well. So this is the sun. It says self-express and embody truth. The moon, satisfy emotional needs, nurture self and others. And it has the little uh, symbol up there as well. Mercury, think, learn, network, and communicate. Venus, 
give and receive love, find value and see beauty. Mars, move forward and defend yourself. Saturn, feel restricted, experience struggle, learn hard work and patience. Jupiter, grow and expand. Uranus, radically change. Neptune, dream and transcend. Pluto, transform. And you can actually use these cards for an oracle card reading as well as yeah, for an ast astrological reading. I'll show you how it works when we're done looking at the cards, okay? Um, Chiron, hurt and heal. I must say about Chiron that it had not been discovered when I was in um, elementary school. I'm not sure which year it was discovered, but back then there were only nine planets, um, and Pluto was a planet back then. All right, here are the astrological signs. Oh, I missed it. Chiron says, um, hurt and heal. And then Aries, independence, bravery, and passion. Taurus, trust, patience, and sensuality. Gemini, Curiosity, Intellect, and Networking. I hope you can see this art well. It's very um, delicate artwork. Cancer, Nurture, Comfort, and Protection. Leo, Self-Confidence, Loyalty, and Creativity. Virgo, Integrity, Reverence, and Service. Libra, Consideration, Fairness, and Harmony. Scorpio, Intensity, Exposing, Purging, and Renewing. Sagittarius, Optimism, Exploration, and Freedom. Capricorn, Ambition, Realism, and Methodical Steps. Aquarius, Originality, Philanthropy, and Progressive Imaginings. Pisces, Intimacy, Intuition, and Compassion. House One, individuality, self-image, and approach to life. House two, physical security, possessions, material values, and self-worth. House three, early learning, childhood relations, the rational mind, and communication. So you see, we'll go back to that song, The Age of Aquarius. Um, that was by a group called The Fifth Dimension, by the way. And it had to be in the late 60s, early 70s, I believe. Anyway, Maybe it was later in the 70s, not sure. But anyway, so when we say the moon is in the seventh house, so we look at the moon's qualities, then we look at the house qualities, and then that tells you a lot about uh, you if your moon is in the seventh house. Okay, so house four, cultural and family roots. House five, passion, play, children, creativity. House six, establishing a foundation, health and daily life. House seven, Profound Relationships, Intimacy, and Romantic Partnerships. House 8, Transformation, Karma, Facing Fears. House 9, Spiritual Growth. House 10, Structure, Discipline, Life Mission. There are some other words. I'm just giving you a little, a brief reading of it. House 11, Friends, Like-Minded Groups, Humanitarian Beliefs. House 12, Spirituality, Transcendence, Karma. Now, conjunction is a union emerging and a coming together. Opposition, an imbalance, a point of tension, a point of tension and a power struggle. Trine is angelic support, harmony, and perfect flow. Square, challenging situation and a mountain to climb. Sextile, it's a combination of tension and flow, potential, and a rewarding situation. And then we come to the elements, earth, um, persistence, patience, and practicality. Air, open-mindedness, objectivity, and learning. Fire, confidence, optimism, passion, and bravery. Water, spirituality, emotion, intuition, and compassion. Um, yin, and then uh, yin, intuition, trust, patience, spirituality, receptivity, yang, proactivity, expression, doing, and forward motion, and then cardinal is instigation, bravery, and a pioneering spirit. Fixed is stability, persistence, loyalty, and dependability. Mutable is surrender, fluidity, and welcoming change. The north node is what you're destined to have. And the south node is what you're destined to release. All right. Now, 
I hope you haven't given up on me because it gets only better. So what I did was I, and I'm covering this because this is my personal information that nobody needs to know. And so this is what your birth chart looks like. So it actually has a, um, a circle with all of the signs on it and those lines in there. It's kind of hard, small and hard to see, but you could blow it up on your copier. And then it has an aspect key and a symbol key. Okay, now, so your cosmic placements. I hope you can see this. It's really light. Okay, so I have your cosmic places. So we see that my sun is in Aries in house seven. My moon is in Aquarius in house five. See? When the moon... Okay, forget that. Um, the ascendant, my ascendant is Virgo. And this is what I learned from uh, one of the tarot tubers. They said that you should always look... If you're looking for your sun sign, like I would have a reading, I would look at the Aries reading, but I should also look at my moon sign and my ascendant because those two are both um, very important to who you are as well as your sun sign. And the funny thing about that is I never really totally identified as an Aries and I thought it was because I was born on the cusp. I was born on March 22nd. But um, the fact is, is that I have a lot of Aquarius in the moon, moon in Aquarius um, qualities, and a lot of Virgo qualities as well. So when I say ascendant, that's your rising sign. So I always look up, when I do look at my readings, I look up Aries, Aquarius, and Virgo. Then it'll tell you what your, um, where your midheaven is. My midheaven is in Gemini, and that just means that has to do with your career and your reputation. And then it'll say North Node is in Virgo, Mercury is in Pisces in House 6, Venus is in Pisces in House 6, and so on. Okay, so basically, I won't bore you with the rest of that, because if you're like me, you won't know what it means anyway, but, at this point. But what, I'm going to show you how to use the cards to learn about astrology and to learn about yourself. So if I, if my son is in Aries, so let's pull the cards. My son is in Aries. Aries in house seven. What can I learn from this? So I can learn that um, I self-express and embody truth in the areas of profound relationships, intimacy, and romantic partnerships with independence, bravery, and passion. All right. So this gives you a short version of how um, how your personality expresses because of where your planets are, your sun sign, your sun sign, and your house that your um, sun sign is in. All right. So let me give you another um, example. So my moon is in Aquarius in house five. What does that say about me? My moon is in, and of course it goes into more depth as you read. Um, about the cards in the book. So I, I, you can read more about the moon, more about Aquarius, more about House 5, and get an even more in-depth picture. I'm just trying to show you, um, you know, briefly how it works because, you know, I don't really want this this video to last hours and hours because my camera will cut off in 35 minutes. So I've got to make it this within 35 minutes. Okay, and then House 5. All right, so what does this tell us about me? And of course, yours will be about you. Um, this says, I satisfy my emotional needs and nurture myself and others in the area of passion, play, children, confidence, and creativity um, by using originality, philanthropy, and progressive imaginings. And um, this was really interesting to me because... Um, I am a drama teacher, and so I do a lot with children, creativity, and confidence as I teach them. And I do use originality and um, my imagination, progressive imaginings, if you will. So this is true. And then when I read in the book what these three have to say, it made it even more um, apparent of uh, why I am the way I am in some ways. Okay, and then we have um, my Ascendant is in Virgo. And so um, there is not, I don't believe there's an Ascendant card. 
I don't think there is. Let me double check, but let's look at Virgo. Um, let's see real quick. Uh, see, I still don't know a whole lot, but I'm, I really feel like I'm learning. So let's see. I don't think we have anything... No, there's no ascendant, but just knowing that your rising sign or your ascendant is a certain um, sign helps you because now I can look up Virgo and see what resonates with me about Virgo. Okay, it says, um, uh, okay, so um, my energetics includes integrity, reverence, and humility. My experiences are um, deal with going inward, attention to detail, rituals, and being of service. I can see that's true. And then um, my shadow side is I can be an overly perfectionist, self-critical, and have impossibly high standards. And that is uh, pretty much, yeah, that's pretty accurate. And if you read the rest, you'll, well... I read the rest and I had to agree with it. So this really, really can tell you a lot about yourself. Now, let's imagine that we are just using this as an oracle, uh, an oracle deck, okay? We can do that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pull a card for us. So, um, universe, please uh, help me... No. Universe, please uh, let us know which card we need to know about right now. Which card is something we need to know right now? The viewers need to know. Okay, and this is Earth. So let's just see if we're doing this as a an Oracle deck reading. Let's just see what Earth has to say and if that message would be helpful for someone. Okay. So we'll look up Earth, 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 where are you? Now remember, Earth is at in one of the, oh, it's not one of the planets in this one. Here, Earth, here we go. So here it says for Omen, the Omen section. It says, um, the place is here, the time is now. What wisdom lives in this very moment? Refrain from plotting and planning and explore the subtle details of the present. Walk one foot in front of the next, connecting with every step. Sink deeper beneath the surface and see today as a creation of your spirit. What is the divine showing you through your present reality? There's a golden elixir braided into every moment. It's yours to be found through deep presence. All right, so to me, that would make a perfect, a perfect oracle reading. And of course, um, you don't have to just have one. Uh, card in your oracle reading. You can have as many as you want. All right, so that is the basic gist of the deck. I just want to give you a couple more helps. If you are also um, trying to learn more about astrology, and especially since I got my birth chart, this book called The Stars Within You, A Modern Guide to Astrology um, by Juliana McCarthy was so, so helpful. Do you see all those little blue bookmarks? That means that I learned a lot and I wanted to be able to look it up again. So if you ever see me review a book or have a book with a lot of little markers in it, that means um, that's a keeper and that's one I'm going to be checking again. And then also I found this in focus book at Barnes and Noble astrology and they have different subject matters for um, different uh, mystical type uh, subject matter. Like they have palmistry and numerology and all this. And um, I do have a, well, I have one little marker in there, but this one is a decent one, too. I like it a lot. Um, it's usually in kind of the bargain section at Barnes & Noble, but it has a lot of good information in here, too. All right. So I will put those both in the, uh, in the, the, uh, oh, my gosh, the comment section, the, not the comment, the description box. All right. So that is my review of the Heavenly Bodies Astrology Deck by Lily Ashwell. I definitely recommend this deck, especially if you're someone who wants to learn more about astrology, but it's a little bit intimidating to you, okay? This has really helped me so, so much, and it wants to, it makes me want to continue with it, okay? And I'm, I'm planning to do that. I've even got a notebook started with all my information about uh, my chart and everything I need to know. So... 
Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel. It's completely free. And I would love it if you would hit the notification bell because then you can be notified whenever a new video drops. All right. So I uh, thank you again for joining me. I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is where you are. And I hope to see you at the next video. Um, take care. Bye-bye.